तो ओम शांति 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 ओम सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराण आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्यत वंदे भगवत पुनः समस्तजनकल्याण निरत करुणाम नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर हरिओं सल्यूटेशन टू आल सो वी सॉ द इंस्ट्रक्शन फॉर कंटेम्पलेशन द होल प्रोसेस एंड देन फोर पॉइंटर्स वेर गिवन इन मंत्र फाइव विरजम विशुद्धम विशदम एंड विशोकम सम मोर पॉइंटर्स वेर गिवन इन मंत्र सिक्स अचिंत्यम वन हु इज अनथिंकेबल एज एन ऑब्जेक्ट बट हु इज थॉट ऑफ एज द सेल्फ अव्यक्तम हु इज राइट नाउ अनमैनिफेस्ट बिकॉज आवर फोकस इज ऑन द फॉर्म द मोर वी आर अटैच टू द फॉर्म वी आर नॉट एबल टू सी द फॉर्मलेस so avyakta also indicates we do the sadhana then that which is avyakta becomes vyakta that is the process for everything a cricketer has to do lot of practice then the talent which is avyakta will manifest in the action cooking first time you make the roti definitely it will make come like an india smap but after you keep making 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 then it will manifest round shape nowadays people don't need to do any of that they have a roti maker they just put one it comes round ho gaya so avyakta means that it that which is unmanifest with sadhana process becomes manifest now one thing we should remember that it is not that this sadhana is making the self manifest self is manifest even now omkar is manifesting now our attention is on bmi so omkar appears and manifest sadhana removes the obstacles which is our identification then om becomes manifest in other example it is actually unmanifest then becomes manifest by sadhana this is a pointer of the self that it is unmanifest as though right now because we are attached to the bmi if we lift our attention from here it is ever manifest it is vyakta only all the time it is vyakta even when we are un- in unmanifest it is vyakta in deep sleep we are unmanifest but truth is not unmanifest in waking dream our attention is on the object emotions and thoughts so the truth appears unmanifest but that time also it is manifest only because what is manifesting as all this vibhum is that only so if somebody says are avyakta is said and vibhu is said then what is the connection that is the connection it is constantly manifesting it is it is the only thing which is appearing but today it is unmanifest to us because of our bmi identification so achintyam avyaktam ananta rupam endless forms it has what can take endless forms that which by itself is formless only can take endless forms ocean has no form so it will take many forms of many many waves you know when we were small this one one candy guy who used to come you know one wooden pole he will have and in that that uh, sugar candy will be pink color pink and white what is it called candy floss ha huh. sugar candy and then children we used to go and tell him whichever shape he will make and give 
animal and then man and then some are that i am talking that only i don't know what is candy floss on that wooden pole this pink color candy will be there then from there one small piece he will take and make are buddhi ka bal is different baba that you make like yeah yeah very sticky and he makes various shapes with that and then you eat it ha ah, birds and animals and you know all that they make and then the thing is when suppose somebody doesn't like you know are mujhe ye nahi chahiye this fellow will take that and mix it in that original one so some places you will see a head of a bird the tail of a tiger is all mixed in that so by itself that sugar thing is formless so it can be taken and made into so many forms you know one point very interesting all of us are also formless only as a jiva we are formless that's why we are able to take so many forms think about it if we were having a form fixed finished we would be right now we are not talking about jiva i am trying to explain ki what is ananta rupa if jiva has no form and can take so many forms what to talk about consciousness ananta rupa it is so achintyam avyaktam ananta rupam shivam that which makes this shava into auspicious is the shiva prashantam shant means calm prashant means calm in spite of all agitations that is called prashantam brahma yonim amritam immortal brahma yonim the source of brahma ji also as the supreme brahman tatha adi madhya anta vihinam ekam beyond time no beginning no middle no end vibhum all pervasive and here we get very upset with little more pervasiveness gurudev used to say some are less pervasive some are more pervasive but truth is all pervasive so if truth is all pervasive if you have little more pervasiveness how does it matter you are more closer to all pervasiveness the lean person is <laughs> that's a positive way of looking i'm not saying don't do exercise and go on expanding but vibhum means that is all pervasive chidananda rupam of the nature of pure consciousness and adbhutam this adbhutam we saw intellect becomes benumbed so this what is the wonder about the self see the self the wonder is it is changeless yet it appears changing it is immortal yet it appears as though finite that is the adbhutam any amount of words can be used to describe it still it is indescribable the pers- person who comes to know that truth becomes one with that truth there is nothing else in the world where if you know that you become that so the more we think of the self it is adbhut and we think that are kya self is you know nameless formless attributeless such a boring dull state most wondrous is this state without undergoing any change it still appears as the changing how fantastic is that no change it has gone through it still appearing changing by itself formless still has form is very amazing and knowing that self one becomes that self not only that one will see oh everyone has self only everything else self only that brahma drishti one will have so it is most adbhutam <clears throat> now pointer of the self is given now please remember again and again we are not talking about some self who is achintya i am achintya each one as the self only that's what but we should contemplate that achintya means i am achintyam i am adbhutam i am avyaktam i am anantam because today we think exact opposite of ourselves that jiva bhav is strong so this steady contemplation when we do all the 
egoistic thoughts that we have about ourselves they will all disappear the psychological identity that we have as i am the jiva that will disappear that is what has to be achieved in contemplation and this is the only method to realize in this gnana marg there is no other path so don't worry if suddenly you don't get to see some light in meditation people come and ask swami ji i have been meditating for years but no light is coming blue light white light yellow light kuch to light dikhna chahiye kuch bhi nahi aata hai why should it come suppose you get to see blue light what does it mean does it mean you became realized at least swami ji the blue light comes and i can see in the mirror do i have a blue light below behind my head halo is there or not nothing will happen see that's an experience it comes and goes what is important is the egoistic identity that we have that has to dissolve the realization is experiencing this state if some purva janma samskar is there or this janma practice one has done whatever it is then there may be some light you may see but that is not necessary that you will see a light all the time still one can be realized some miracle some siddhi swami ji i still can't predict future i can't read minds of people you know i don't know why i am meditating none of that is required this is the direct means to realize the self if one wants to see white light blue light there are other processes do that then you will see lights also bhut pret pishach there are people who can see they have that capability there are there are different processes for that siddhi if one wants different processes for that what is this process for person who has got vairagya we saw no that person who has got vairagya to know brahman is the only requirement of this person he went to ashwalaya rishi went to brahma ji don't forget that and he is highly qualified he doesn't want anything else so he not interested in light and siddhi and reading mind nothing what does he want brahma vidyam varishta the supreme <clears throat> bas so if somebody is thinks that this meditation is boring what does it mean <clears throat> vairagya is not enough mind still wants some anubhav some extra experience which will make one feel ah what a experience i had it will happen here when we realize the self or on the way also as this ego becomes lesser and lesser <coughs> one will start experiencing that so the milestones are not some light and all that milestones is ego pressure is lesser this increases more and more identification with this now if somebody is not able to do this subtle contemplation on the nameless attributeless formless then what to do use the form see the seventh mantra uma sahayam parameshwaram prabhum trilochanam nilakantham prashantam ध्यात्वा मुनिर्गछति भूतयोनिम समस्त साक्षिं तमसः परस्तात सो दिस इज द फॉर्म ऑफ उमा महेश्वर उमा सहायम वन हु इज द कॉन्सर्ट ऑफ मदर उमा so uma and maheshwara most beautiful symbolism who are uma maheshwara uma represents the shakti and maheshwara represents the shiva tatva uma sahayam and the word used sahayam is the consort of uma so shivji is known through uma you see sita ram radhe krishna lakshmi narayan uma maheshwara why because without shakti the manifestation will not happen 
pure shiva tattva is unmanifest unmanifest in the sense nameless formless attributeless no creation no duality nothing that shiva tattva's shakti is uma brahman plus maya then becomes ishvara then srishti rachana will happen if both these come together then srishti will happen only uma cannot exist a power cannot exist without the locus of the power a power has to be there speaking singing walking talking there is a locus of that power then that power will manifest the person in whom the power resides can choose to manifest whenever they want and keep it unmanifest whenever they want so the power depends on the person person does not depend on the power but if a <clears throat> creation has to happen then the person must invoke that power then that manifestation will happen otherwise it will not happen <clears throat> tonight we will see the manifestation of your shakti your creativity you remember no there is something at night tonight swami ji we are reveling in kaivalya sthiti why you are pulling us down we don't know what is what is there tonight we are living in timeless state time only doesn't exist for us adi madhya anta vihinam ekam i am that <laughs> shakti 915 your group presentation is there so uma maheshwara uma sahayam consort of uma now uma also is very beautiful word parvati devi she did lot of tapasya to obtain lord shiva as her husband you know it is interesting shivji also did tapasya to get parvati devi you know that ah uh, read shiva puran you know parvati devi only did tapasya to get shivji shivji also did he didn't marry anybody after sati got sati emulated herself he also did tapasya that i want sati only she also did tapasya then they got married shiva puran has full description both of them did tapasya for each other so when mother parvati was doing tapasya you know she is parvatraj daughter himavan's daughter so she is in the forest and initially she was <clears throat> you know eating fruits then she stopped eating fruits only water then she stopped water only air and she became very thin and this maina devi came to see what my child is doing you know tapasya she is doing so she saw this parvati has become so thin and you know long hair and she is standing and meditating on shiva and uh, brilliant tej all over her body shining resplendent but she has become thin so looking at her this maina devi said oh ma then it became uma that's the story of the word uma oh ma meaning she is the jiva she is the shakti of course but as a uh, manifestation she is that jiva who did intense tapasya to obtain ishvara to have ishvara darshan to unite with ishvara and one interesting thing about uma is what you know uma is the feminine aspect of om how nice is that a u ma if you rearrange will become u m a uma that is a beautiful aspect so feminine form of om is uma and in sanskrit also if you see feminine feminine words will end with akara rama you know like that it end with akara generally masculine will end with akara so a u ma in that u and ma and then a you bring back at the end of ma it will become u ma so she is omkara swarup shivji also is omkara swarup uma sahayam 
सो जस्ट वन वर्ड वन कैन मेडिटेट सो मच उमा एंड महेश्वर दे रिप्रेजेंट शिवा एंड शक्ति दे रिप्रेजेंट ओमकार दे रिप्रेजेंट जीवस पुरुषार्थ एंड ईश्वर कृपा उमा महेश्वर and there is such a healthy understanding between them she doesn't say you don't give me quality time shivji goes on meditating she takes care of the srishti and everything else she doesn't say you don't spend time with me and shivji is not insecure ki i am meditating i don't know what my wife is doing both of them spend time with each other give space to each other they have love they have trust they have respect everything fantastic relationship uma maheshwara so uma sahayam parameshwaram who is the supreme lord so from shiva purana if you see then we say that even brahma ji vishnu ji all of them came from shiva ji only Shiva is the creator of Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh also, and each Brahmanda has Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh. Like that, so many Brahmandas are there. All these Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh, and Brahmandas have come from Shiva. So Parameshwara, Prabhu means the Lord. So who is the Lord? Who is Sarva Samartha? Who is capable of doing everything? so in sanskrit we say kartum shakyam akartum shakyam anyatha kartum shakyam the lord can do certain things the lord can be without doing anything and the lord can do things completely differently also he is not governed he is not bound by anything kartum akartum anyatha kartum shakyam is prabhu lord so if bhagwan decides to do some miracle nothing prevents the lord we is look at everything only from the uh, small window of science and our limited intellect and understanding if bhagwan decides to do something why can't he do he will do so prabhum uma sahayam parameshwaram prabhum trilochanam one who has three eyes Three eyes. All of us have two eyes. Bhagwan has three. One eye is the eye of compassion. One eye is the eye of karma, justice, justice and compassion. With that, we have to live in the world. Do our karma. Do our duties. Accept the karma phala objectively. and be kind and compassionate if we live like that following dharma doing our karma being compassionate then this third eye will open that is the eye of gnan gnana chakshu which is this through contemplation this gnana chakshu will open when the gnana chakshu opens what happens generally people think that shiv ji gets angry then he opens the eyes and he burns the world but gnana chakshu is open meaning through the knowledge when the right vision is there that i am not this jiva a person awakens to that state of pure consciousness this entire realm of plurality disappears the waker the dream character wakes up then what happens to the dream bhasma finished gone because it was never there it was not real so when we realize the truth we realize there is there was no world neither it was created nor it was there nor it got destroyed so what actually got destroyed so called actually got destroyed is ignorance got destroyed through the knowledge that ignorance got destroyed ignorance was creating all delusion i don't know if any of you experienced yesterday some delusion in the night walk sometimes one fee one feels like that somebody is going there there is nobody there but it's so dark one feels like that i was walking towards there there were gap between those trees and i was walking towards the trees and people see a whitish kind of 
Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. That very common happens in the da- in the darkness. Suddenly, one will feel somebody is there. There is nobody. Absolutely nobody there. <laughs> It's just delusion. A lot of dig drama happens in the darkness. One will hear sounds. There are nobody. No sounds are there. No, but no creature is there also. But suddenly one hears some sound. One sees something which is not there. And then delusion. Whole srishti is like that. One delusion. When this jnana chakshu opens, then one realizes, "Hare, what a fool I was. Getting scared for nothing. There was nothing. I am only this whole thing." so that is the third eye but before the third eye opens and the world disappears shiv ji also is the deity of vairagya so the gnana chakshu when it opens before the atma gnana happens the vairagya chakshu also is called third third eye that vairagya chakshu will burn burn the worldly nastiness so when shiv ji opened the third eye kamdev was burnt kamdev was burnt no that is called vairagya so it's not that whole world is burnt many people think that shiv ji gets very angry he opens the eyes whole world gets burnt as though he doesn't have control on how much to burn what to burn he just open the eyes and fatak everything burnt he directed it only to kamdev and kamdev got burnt rest of them all are alive even kamdev's wife rati was spared only kamdev got burnt so that is vairagya If a seeker overcomes karma, that is vairagya, then this jnana chakshu can open. Without overcoming karma, jnana chakshu cannot open. So, if there are people, spiritual teachers, who will say, doesn't matter. Sambhog se samadhi, arey Rama. And there are people who wanted to follow that path, so they too happily latched on to it. Maximum body identification, sambhog will lead to, and this is. beyond body how this will lead to that so much of virya shakti will go away in that sambhog how will one get into samadhi avastha but they have logic also you know in that intense moment of love we forget ourselves and the experience that one has is the ultimate experience are ram samadhi experience is absolutely indescribable what you are comparing this to that it is not possible Shivji is the best example to follow. Burn Kamdev, open the Gnana Chakshu, then steadily contemplate. Otherwise, while doing contemplation, Kam only will keep coming. What is our obstacle in contemplation? Kam, no. Morning meditation we are doing, and what comes in the mind? I hope Monday, Friday, Saturday does not rain because you know I really want to go to the Jwala Mukhi Mandir, but you know this rain. Suppose it lands up, then we can't go, and then what to do? Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. Jwala Mukhi mind has gone there. Somewhere it goes. My flight, you know, unnecessarily they prepared it. Now I have to leave early morning. Now why did they do that? Now unnecessary. Now I have to long wait in the Delhi airport. Now what will I do in airport? Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. <laughs> what will mind do? <laughs> what is our obstacle? Calm only is our obstacle. that kaam has to be burnt before this jnana chakshu opens with kaam is not burnt how it will work so shiv ji is best example for a sadhak he destroyed kaam de third eye is that so one eye of justice one eye of compassion one eye which will burn kama then jnana chakshu opens full world ignorance everything gone Now listen to Guru Dev giving a very nice interpretation of this Trilochanam. Only Guru Dev can give that interpretation. I have not heard this anywhere from anybody, nor even read in any commentary. That is our master. A B C D.
Now you can see. We trilogenum who has got the three eyes. Is it simple? What are the stars standing in your back? I mean, a flag. Does it mean? And supposing an Indian sees it, and he doesn't know. In India, he has never educated himself. He says, "What is this? This flag is full of stars. Are they all stargazers?" He misunderstands. What can you do? What are the stars standing for? Are they not for the states? You who know what that stands for, you are encouraged to feel the pride of the nation or the joy of the nation because you know the symbol, what it stands for. Thus, the Lord has got three eyes. Immediately, everybody says, biologically, this is not possible. But the Lord that we are talking is not a product that came from the local hospital, maternity ward. See, three eyes doesn't mean that he has got an another eye. Every one of us has got a third eye, isn't it? Two eyes, the fleshy eye. Everybody sees the same world. Then. You, according to your understanding, you understand, is it not? A lawyer sees the papers that you present. He sees. Don't worry about it. It's all possible. Why? He has got a third eye, and he quietly takes you by the hand and then goes through law into safety. And that is called a very successful criminal lawyer. <laughs> He knows about a jeweler. To you and I, anything bright is diamond. He knows the right way. So, among a sack full of artificial diamonds, if there is one blue one that is there, which is really costly, the fellow picks it up and says, "You can take the rest free." I will take only this because that is thirty thousand pounds. I mean uh, dollars, while all of them put together is three and a half dollars. Artificially made, but to you and I, everything that is flashy is diamond. Diamond eyes, you know it. Isn't it? An engineer comes and says, "I'm very sorry, it's not going to stand long." Is done long. I made it. <laughs> I don't think that the beam can stand that load. How? By his experience, by his knowledge. Every one of us has got it. The Lord is one who sees what you and I see, but He also sees the great reality. चालू कर सो वॉट वॉज द थर्ड आई द इनसाइट द स्पेशल इनसाइट लाइक ही सेड नो द ज्वेलर हैज अ स्पेशल इनसाइट नो विच इज द मोस्ट प्रेशियस डायमंड लाइक दैट all of us have insight then second point he said the lord sees what we all see and the lord also sees what we can't see that is the higher level higher state of consciousness so trilochanam third eye meditation also is very powerful in the world people use third eye meditation for different things but in sadhana what we have been doing in meditation focus here or here and then one will feel a throbbing sensation as one uh, practices that a throbbing sensation one will feel that is the sign of 
alertness, concentration. So the moment the mind wanders, the throbbing will stop or it becomes lesser. So one knows that the mind has wandered. Just like we use a mala and the rotation, if it stops, then we know that the mind has wandered. Similarly, this is one more aspect. I am not going into yoga aspect of what is the benefit that chakra opens and all that, but I am speaking from Vedanta standpoint. So steady contemplation, one focuses here and then one starts doing the contemplation. Trilochanam. Nila Kantham, who is blue in neck, blue, blue necked one. So Bhagwan Shiva is white in color. Karpura Gauram. And blue is his neck. So it is not like a blemish. But what is it? It is his decoration, it is his abhushan. If you read this commentary of Gurudev, very nicely he has given here the process of this churning of the ocean, the symbolism of that and how the halahal poison that comes out is like the ignorance, impurities, all that which comes out. So, you see the paragraph number 3, number 4, after, under this blue necked one, blue necked Nilkantha description is there, no? In that fourth paragraph you read, subjectively, in each of us, when churning is done in our purified sattvic mind, the milky ocean, so white is the color of sattva, so milky ocean is sattvic mind. With the intellect, that is the Mandara mountain, that supports the mind and the rope of the ego, serpent king Vasuki, by the lower asuras and the higher devas in us, meditation starts. In the early stages of this meditation, churning, many tempting prophets, siddhis emerge out but if the churning is continued, a time would come when just before the experience of immortality, Amrita, the ego, Vasuki, must vomit out its entire subconscious and unconscious Vasanas poison. This great poison of ignorance cannot be totally eliminated until wisdom, Jnanam, dawns. This ignorance can only be held in the neck, indicating a point away from between the head and the heart. Ego and egocentric desires should not be allowed to poison either the head or the heart of the meditator at this moment and naturally when the churning continues, the supreme experience is unfolded and the goal is gained. Such a nice interpretation, no? Why only in the neck? He could have held in the chest also. No, no, Mother Parvati held so it was in the neck. That is in the story. But the reason is don't poison the head, don't poison the heart, keep it in the neck. Ego and egocentric desires, they will become the ornament. And Bhagwan took that halahal poison. He didn't tell the devatas, when Siddhis came, you didn't call me, you took away all the Siddhis. But when this poison came, then only you are calling me. No, he happily came, took that poison and went. Shiva Bhakta is like that. That is a sadhana actually to do by itself. The world will give poison only to those who are doing selfless work. Will the world do give applauses? Look at all the lives of great masters. They are cursed and condemned and criticized. Few of them are glorified, but majority get criticized. And even those who are glorified, they have to go through the process of criticism first. How much Gurudev was criticized? People didn't give him a venue to do the talks and the Shankaracharya also criticized him. One Shankaracharya criticized him saying, I curse you that your tongue will get blasted into thousand pieces. <laughs> Jesus got crucified. People used to hurl abuses at Buddha. You are brainwashing our children. Mirabai was given poison. Selfless workers will get poison only. Still they should maintain their selflessness. That is sadhana. 
that requires purity otherwise we become bitter that's our own impurity that shows only what our impurity of our mind that means what i have to still withdraw i mean i have to still become more selfless more sadhana has to be done then world may give whatever but we will not return poison if we can't give amrit at least we don't spew venom back onto the world if they give venom we hold it in the neck not allowing it to corrupt our heart or our head that is a sadhana and shiva bhakta has to do that many times it's not very easy what makes it not easy this ego only what else will it be leave it his ego says are i did so much good no nobody appreciated and they are criticizing me i am not going to do again one has to do sadhana purify the mind do some japa quieten the mind then slowly slowly one gets established then let the world do anything nothing will happen adharma one will not bear that is not the point but the world will give impurities only it has impurity so what will it give it will give us impurity we have to handle it so trilochanam nilakantham nilakantha also means what you know a seeker can offer one's impurities to bhagwan saying bhagwan i am charging my churning my mind this ego is spending spewing venom vasuki na bhagwan gurudev said vasuki is the ego this ego this serpent is spewing venom you please take it and bhagwan has that vasuki on his neck so you please make your make it your abhushan but please help me not to spew venom on the world what happens is when the world gives us negativity we become negative and give back negativity to the world that is first level second level is sadhak evolves to get the negativity but not give back negativity but it disturbs the sadhak then the third level will be get the negativity don't get disturbed and don't give back negativity then what to do offer it to bhagwan that's all bhagwan will take care of it then we are done this levels in sadhana so trilochanam nilakantham prashantam now obviously who is nilakantha only can be prashant what we saw earlier no prashantam means in spite of disturbances and provocations one is calm if i am nilakantha i can be prashant if i am not nilakantha i will be ashant <laughs> so if i am ashant then what does it mean i must cultivate this level 2 uh, level 3 actually nilakantham prashantam now these two lines have given us the pointers of the sagun sakar so form is there and then the symbolism of the form we has we have spoken about the gunas compassion is nilakantha calmness is prashanta trilochanam is uh, free from uh, kama having an intuitive insight all these are gunas so that is called saguna and sakar uma maheshwara is the akar so sakar saguna sakar dhyatva munihi this reflective person meditates on this form along with the values represented by that form like gurudev used to say ideals represented by the idol because our mind will understand picture and sound but sound very few words subconscious mind i am talking about so that picture has to go deep with the suggestiveness the suggestiveness is a bhav words can help to come to that bhav so the moment we say trilochanam then the bhav is free from kama dev free from kama and that must go inside that i want to be like shiva free from kama initially one may use words to say that but after some time one will not say those words the word trilochanam itself will suggest to the mind it will come to that state nilakantham 
the mind will come in the state of forgiveness in the state of acceptance so that picture will go inside now dhyatva one who meditates like this that muni contemplative person what will that person experience gachati bhuta yonim now gachati don't really think that the person will go there because gachati means go but here go means experience what bhuta yonim the source of the entire creation meaning the tattva consciousness what is that tattva samasta sakshim is the witness in the hearts of all the jivas so it is not out there somewhere from the form slowly one shifts to the sakshi the witness in us is consciousness manifesting through a pure intellect is the sakshi so one says i am that sakshi so see in this form worship itself the formless has come or not those who have not studied our scriptures they will talk like fools the hindus are, wor- are worshiping idols we are pagans and what not they go on talking form is a very important means to quieten the mind to invoke bhavana to surrender purify the mind and then to realize that i am the sakshi consciousness samasta sakshi man sakshi in me is the same in all samasta sakshi tamasa parastat beyond all darkness no it is not a state of blank dullness darkness it is a state of illumination now having said this that same shiva appears as all other forms of deities also so one appears as the many see the eighth mantra sa brahma sa shivah sa indrah sa aksharah paramaswarat sa eva vishnu sa prana sa kalo agni sa chandramaha so the one truth appears as many so the same tatva is brahma also meaning here brahma ji sa shiva that only is shiva also who was described earlier so that tatva is manifesting as brahma as shiva and down it is said sa eva vishnu so brahma vishnu shiva all are that one consciousness so these three are called the trinity god generator organizer destroyer brahma vishnu mahesh that one consciousness appears as the three and the same tatva also appears as the devatas so these devatas are below the trinity below meaning they have lesser power than trinity so indra is the king of devatas sa indra sa akshara that same tatva is that imperishable truth also paramaswarat is supreme self effulgent consciousness which is appearing as all this sa kalah is time also meaning yamraj also agni devata also chandrama also meaning the deities they are representing all the different devatas this is what this is one mantra like this you will find in many upanishads it comes even the narayan suktam that you are chanting this comes or not sab brahma sa shiva sa hari sendra sa akshara param aswara tatagam satyam param brahma purusham krishna pingalam urdhvare tam virupaksham vishwarupa yavai namo namaha ganapati acharya shirsh also it comes similar in spite of all this written everywhere we still feel no no i have to worship shiva also krishna also durga also hanuman also devi also ganesh also and every other deity wherever we go take one 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 pool full puja room is crowded public it is you know it is the common puja room of the family then each one has different deity to worship so they are there that is no problem but somewhere one has to come to decide one form 
how long will we go on reveling in so many so many forms what is the objective to realize non dual self no from duality to non duality we have to go and in bhagwan in the upasana only we have so much of duality then how we will proceed to non duality choose any one based on the bhav based on the you know relationship that one can build what we spoke earlier what are those three sambandh smaran sharanagati choose one and then focus exclusively on that one you can worship others like suppose we go to jwala mukhi mandir don't stand outside saying no i am only a upasak of shiva i will not come into this temple worship and say that my shiva only is jwala mukhi or ask jwala mukhi devi that please bless me with more devotion for shiva ho gaya na kaam this does not mean we don't worship others but in my daily upasana only one only one okay swami ji only one i will worship but can i add little just hanuman chalisa no just one cuz you know shiv ji ka avatar only hanuman ji so hanuman chalisa i want to add then slowly we say but you know shiv ji son no ganesh ji and i love ganesh ji also no ganesh ji also right? you know devi navratri is coming you know i feel very bad how can i Uh, not uh, bring devi so then slowly devi also will come inside now everybody is there again so every day again i have to do wash each one of them put flower to each one of them chandan to each one of them not required spend that much time in worshiping one form contextually in festival time celebrate others no problem but every single day do one sadhana only but swami ji i like hanuman chalisa can i not chant hanuman chalisa also if you are making it a part of daily sadhana that much time you do shiva upasana you will go still deeper no i am talking about nitya sadhana i am not talking about naimitik naimitik you can worship as many depending on festival location whatever but nitya sadhana only one because one is all so he clarifies this now this one appearing as many happens to all of us also based on relationships one only you know we are but we have we are appearing as many as father son brother sister so many one is appearing as many so will your child connect to all identities or one identity <laughs> child will connect to you as a parent then you may play the role of a friend also they say no nowadays the children when they become teenagers now we are like friends only you may behave like friends with them but you are still a parent that person is still the child only that one should not forget but you are connecting with the one only same way suppose i have different bhav i can still channelize the bhav to one form suppose i love shiv ji or i love vishnu bhagwan or bal gopal sometimes i may worship bal gopal in sakha bhav sometimes in das bhav sometimes in uh, you know priyatam bhav any bhav but it is one depending on my emotion sometimes i get angry also with that bal gopal enough now how much you are doing leela band karo maya aapko darshan do bas ho gaya to get angry also then offer to bhagwan only but one mere to giridhar gopal dusro na koi bas one then you see the sadhana will intensify very fast otherwise you know the mind plays a trick this is really one of the tricks that mind can play which we should recognize that because it keeps us engaged in the duality we are not able to move ahead no we are stuck there definitely it is better than not doing anything but these are levels no from many to one to beyond and ask yourself that one other question what would bhagwan want me to do just ask that simple question will bhagwan want me to stay stuck with all the forms or will bhagwan want me to become single pointed and become one finally with him what will bhagwan want from me because what is the nature of love love is to do what the beloved wants what bhagwan wants from me ask that question 
Swamiji, how will I know what Bhagavan wants? Veda Vakya is Bhagavan's Vani. He is telling through Veda only. <laughs> Don't think some sudden Akashvani will come suddenly. Bhagavan will tell you, now you start worshipping me. This is my desire. Through the Vedas he is telling. Upanishads he is saying. Through the lives of saints he is showing that. So one appears as many. So the one appearing many can be based on relationships, can also be based on function. If I drive a car, I become driver. If I paint, I become painter. If I cook in the house, I become cook. Based on function. So based on relationship, based on function, the one appears as many. Same way in this Rishti. Based on various functions, somebody is in charge of in, uh, rain, so is Indra Devata. Somebody is in charge of uh, ocean, so Varun Devata. Somebody is in charge of air, Vayu Devata. But who are all these? One Supreme. Now problem is, we forget one Supreme and start worshipping these Devatas. That is what they were doing in the Gokul. They forgot Bhagwan, and they are worshipping Indra, that also out of fear. That Indra, if we don't worship, now he will not give rain, then we will suffer. And Indra also got pride that without me, they will not get rain. So Bhagwan humbled the pride of Indra also and made the Gokulvasis also aware that a Supreme Bhagwan only manifests. That is the Govardhan Leela. So one appears as many. So there should be no hesitation. If at all hesitation comes in the mind, now these are two Nice ways to remove that hesitation. One, ask what God wants from me. Second, what is the basis of this decision of mine? It is based on Shastra. It is not based on whims and fancy of my mind or anybody's mind. It is time-tested wisdom of the Shastra. And who has said, who has proved this life of saints is the proof of that. Then there is nothing to hesitate. Just choose one. No, Swamiji, it is better to have many because in case they feel bad and they, you know, cause some harm to us, so better be safe than sorry. <laughs> is that not an insult of Bhagwan? then? Think about that. If we have that fear, is it not insult of Bhagwan? Will Bhagwan is Bhagwan sitting there to feel bad, he is not worshipping me, so now I am going to punish? Then is that Bhagwan worth worshipping? <laughs> then it is like any other politician, no? So we should remove all this from our head. Clear the head. Focus on one. Sa Brahma, Sa Shiva, Sa Rudra, Sa Hari, Sendra, Sokshara, Paramaswarat. So now this is one meaning. Now very interesting is this. Brahma, Shiva and Vishnu is given here, right? So when I use the mud and create the pot, I become the creator. I don't become pot, Baba. I become creator. Huh, okay, potter identity is correct. <laughs> so I become the creator of the pot. Then if I paint it nicely and I, you know, take care of it, put it in some nice place, put some plant inside it, then I become what? Sustainer. And then in some anger, I break that pot. Then what I become? I am only sustainer, creator, destroyer also. And... What is a destroyer from one standpoint is also created from another standpoint. From the standpoint of the pot, I am the destroyer. But from the standpoint of the pieces, I am the creator. How interesting is that? So if somebody says, how can one truth appear as all the three, creator, sustainer and destroyer? It is possible. It happens in our daily life only. They appear as three different departments, but it is one person only doing all the three. So now having said this, what is the next mantra? From So in the next few mantras, what is the vision of the enlightened? See the, the Muni, the Yati, how the Yati prepared oneself, contemplated, then using the pointer, then using the form, and then seeing that one in this whole world has different forms and also has different devatas, all that was said. Now, what is the vision of this realized person? Now, this yati is realized. What is the vision of this realized person? That is said now in next few verses. Vision of the enlightened person and the nature of this supreme knowledge. 
नाइन्थ मंत्र स एव सर्व यदूत यव्य सनातनम ज्ञावा तम मृत्युमती नान्य पंथा विमुक्त सो सर्व यदूत दैट वन अलोन इज वॉट वॉज एंड यच्च भव्यम एंड वॉट विल बी वॉट वॉज मीन्स वॉट एवर वॉज इन द सृष्टि टिल नाउ एंड वॉट एवर इज गोइंग टू हैपन इन द सृष्टि नाउ ऑन वर्ड्स मीनिंग पास्ट एंड फ्यूचर सत्युग ऑल्सो त्रेता युग ऑल्सो द्वापर युग ऑल्सो एंड नाउ दिस कलयुग एंड फर्दर वॉट इज गोइंग टू हैपन इन कलयुग ऑल दिस इज अपियरेंस ऑफ वन ट्रूथ Don't think that Satyug Treta Yug is appearance of Brahma Bhagwan, and this, uh, you know, Dwapar Yug, and then this Kali Yug is appearance of Shaitan. No? Everything is appearance of one Bhagwan. Sa Eva, Eva means alone. Oh, but Swami Ji, so much of uh, uh, what we call the grossness of the mind in Kali Yuga. Satyug mind was so purified. Now the mind has become so much uh, grossified. that is the con- condition of the mind but same brahman only is appearing as all this the great positive fabulous dream that one has is also waker's mind and in the dream if there is some uh, tragedy or some bad event happening that is also waker's mind only saeva sarvam yad bhutam what was and what will be and yet it is sanatanam meaning eternal i told you know it is adbhutam being eternal and changeless yet what was and what will be which means the world of change because world is continuously changing being changeless by itself sanatan eternal our our dharma is called actually sanatan dharma why is our dharma called sanatan dharma because the truth that the dharma reveals is sanatan it is eternal truth and it is not some eternal truth somewhere out there the truth that is revealed by the vedas is tat tvam asi you are the eternal truth which scripture tells us that you tell me and we say all scriptures of the world say the same thing and we hindus ignorant hindus we only say that others are not saying that we are saying all scriptures of the world same thing same thing maybe some values are same but satya is very different people have got killed and crucified for saying i am one with god and this is the country which has celebrated that the jeevan mukta is celebrated in this country as the highest achievement of a human being is to experience jeevan mukti aham brahmasmi who who that is the essence of the vedic knowledge now if somebody says vedic knowledge uh, the essence of vedic knowledge and the essence of other scriptures is the same it is not the same baba it is just not the same only at a certain level maybe certain injunctions may be similar uh, where one may hopefully live in good values uh, harmony with each other but apart from that so many things are very different so our culture is sanatan because it tells us you are sanatan the entire essence of vedic knowledge is to realize i am sanatan beyond gender beyond any other differences the guru shishya parampara that is going on is sanatan show me which other culture has this guru shishya parampara unbroken tradition of in every path not in one path in gnana marg there is guru shishya parampara in bhakti there is guru shishya parampara yoga marg guru shishya parampara nath sampradaya guru shishya parampara everywhere guru shishya parampara continuously going on vedas themselves are sanatan they will never perish because they are not books books will perish knowledge will not perish so self is sanatan veda is sanatan guru shishya parampara is sanatan we are sanatan all the other jeevas in the world also are sanatan 
how fabulous is this culture so that's why it is sanatan dharma so here it is that supreme self is eternal changeless indestructible and it is only appearing as what was and what will be gnyatva tam having known this what will happen mrityu matyeti one goes beyond death because change is death realizing changeless one goes beyond death nanya pantha vimukta ye there is no other path to liberation than this to know the sanatan is to realize the sanatan and that is called mukti vimukti oh swami ji this is very fanatic there is no other path to realize this that means what about other paths <laughs> this is not talking about only this kaivalya upanishad this is saying there is no other path to realize immortality except know that changeless truth as your true self whichever path will lead you to that take that but the ultimate thing is what you are om you are sanatan that's all is it fanatic to say that the only method to recognize form is to use the eyes is there is it fanatic that if i want if i have to recognize this is a mic this is a book this is the table the only method for me to recognize this form to um, understand appreciate form is what the eyes is there any other method can we recognize with the ear no no sound we can recognize you are recognizing sound but you are not seeing the form of table no i can feel and then i can imagine that form that is the mental vritti the imagination of the form that is not the actual form that one is seeing to see the form the only method is eyes that is not fanatic that is stating a fact the only method to realize the immortal is go beyond body mind i intellect identification identify with the changeless is it fanatic is not fanatic whatever will help to do that follow that path but the only principle is go beyond change to realize the changeless gnatvatam mrityu matyeti so this is one beautiful mantra now what does the realization do to this jivan mukta while living in the world internally one experiences i am beyond death because i am changeless consciousness bmi are perishing i am not this bmi that is a subjective realization how will this person transact with the world see this 10th mantra sarva bhuta stham atmanam sarva bhuta stham atmanam sarva bhuta nichatmani sampashyan brahma paramam yati nanyena hetuna sarva bhutastham atmanam the realized person sees the self in all and sarva bhutani cha atmani and all of them in the self what does that mean he sees the self in all and all of them in the self means today when we see people what do we see first we see what appearance na no? what clothes this person is wearing which brand what type of jewelry or whatever you know accessories they have first our attention was on that then goes on the body then slowly it will turn to the mind then as we strike conversation we know more about the person slowly one will understand the values the vision of this person but with that it stops what does the jivan mukta see the jivan mukta sees that each of us are divine the atma of every being sarva bhuta stham atmanam now very interesting is we can see in others only what level we are at that is the best part if i am stuck at body level i will see everybody as body only if i am operating more from emotion level then i will be more sensitive to the emotions of people 
if i am living uncompromisingly my value systems then i can appreciate the vision the goals the values of other people the struggle that they go through i can appreciate that but if i am a sadhak then only i can appreciate the other person also is a spiritual sadhak whether that person knows or not whether that person is following or not the jivan mukta doesn't see the self only in the realized beings tapon maharaj ravan maharshi meet each other both are realized beings so both can see the self in each other but is their vision limited only to realized beings no sarva bhuta stham atmana in everyone they see the same one atma no difference so what is the practical implication of that they can look at us at the most deepest level and they can help us to evolve also and their very presence is very uplifting so many people they feel that so even their look will be most powerful and people like gurudev if they say that raman maharshi when he went to meet raman maharshi he was sitting in front of raman maharshi in silence raman maharshi's eyes were closed gurudev is looking at him this was before he took sanyas then he opened the eyes and one straight look and gurudev says he knows more about me than i know about myself because they operate from the level of the self so in their presence one feels uplifted they operate out of unconditional love people feel accepted completely accepted so many people go and hug no ma amritanand mai how they feel so completely accepted sometimes they break down they cry because so much of love so like that sarvabhutastham atmanam sarvabhutani cha atmani meaning there is no difference between the bhutas and atma that's the meaning that there is no being there is only atma manifesting as all just that they don't know it question always rises is swami ji if they are seeing everyone as jeevan mukta then how can they think that we are ignorant it means they are seeing the self in everyone no then how can they think that we are ignorant then how did gurudev have compassion to come down and serve <laughs> but ignorance is seeing you no know, then that's the question if the master is a realized person for whom everyone is appearance of self only then ignorant does not exist no for him then how are you ignorant for him that is limitation of example because mother is finite child is finite here the jivan mukta is infinite so he sees also everyone as infinite everyone as infinite is a limitation of language but the point is the highest level the jivan mukta knows all of us are one there is no duality there is nobody ignorant nobody is dull nobody is uh, the krishti only has not happened actually that is the highest level of their operation they abide in that state but at the relative level there is one identity that they have but they know that that identity is false that is called badhit ahankar falsified ego so from that standpoint when they look at the others they see there is ignorance but they know ki this ignorance is not real that nobody is really bound but there is a role so the teacher gurudev is a teacher so he will feel compassion for others and he comes down but he knows that everything is a play only it is not real like an actor plays the role na properly in the movie knowing very well that neither i am i this role nor are others this role we are different same way it is this whole thing is like a natak maya kalpita desha kala kalana vaichitra chitrikritam it is created by maya this whole thing like we see the magic magic no all of us know magic is illusion 
Is it real? It is not real, but we still see it happening. It is illusory. And within the illusion, we enjoy the illusion or not. We pay money to go and see that magic. Same way, within the realm of the difference is for you and me, this is real. For the Jivan Mukta, it is not real. Swamiji, if it is not real, then what prompts the Jivan Mukta to act? That is why it is called uncaused compassion. Just suppose you think about it. Some in the play, one person is an actor who knows that I am not this role. But other four people, they think they are this role only. Then what will this one person try to do? We will try to tell them, no, you are not this. Don't take it so, you know, be, don't be so attached to this. Play the role, but this is not real. Gurudev gave no, that famous line. When he gave an autograph to the actor, what did he write? While acting, think it is real. In real life, act well. That is it. So, sarvabhutastham atmanam sarvabhutanicha atmani. All the beings are, all the, the self is in all the beings and all the beings are in the self. Meaning there is no difference between the beings and the self. Sampashyan, seeing this very clearly with knowledge. Pashyan means to see. Sampashyan means see very clearly. Sampashyan Brahma Paramam, this person sees the Supreme Brahman. Yati Nanyena Hetuna, then what happens? This person attains that Brahman. Then there is no other means. Again it came. There is no other means. Na anyena hetuna. Meaning, as long as I see difference between self and beings, I will be deluded. When I don't see the difference, duality is gone. Only one self is. That is real. The beings appearing are illusory. Then one has awakened. Awaken. Now, these two were the state of the Jivan Mukta. Now comes next another nice analogy because we have to do mananam again and again. Now, this realization is over. See, two levels are there right now in this Upanishad. When he said Shraddha Bhakti Dhyana Yoga Davaihi, the highest seeker will know the truth realized. Some seeker leads little more push. So the mantras after that till this mantra number 10. That is for the another level of seeker. Still we don't know the truth. We are not able to contemplate. We need still more reflection, mananam to be done. So the mantra 11 is speaking about that mananam. Very nice analogy this is. Atma namara nimkritva. Pranavam Chotararanim Jnana Nirmathan Abhyasat Pasham Dahati Panditaha In your book, is it Aranim with small e or big e? Small, no? Yeah, everyone has small e, no? Atmanam Aranim Kritva. So this is Arani Manthan, this is called. The traditional way to light fire. Wooden cup, upper wooden cup, lower wooden cup and in between is the rod, wooden rod. And then with the thread it is tied and one churns. That friction will produce sparks. So they keep some... Uh, cotton, hay, all that nearby. And once that spark hits this hay or cotton, then fire is there, then that will be used to light the main Agni. That's the Vedic way of creating the Agni. So this analogy is used. Atmanam Aranim Kritva. So the lower Arani is the Jiva. Pranavamcha Uttar Aranim. The upper Arani is Omkar. And this process of Mathanam, Agni Manthanam it is called. The Jnana Nirmathana Abhyasat. In this analogy what it means? It is the churning of knowledge. 
this ego must steadily contemplate on this omkar and this churning must happen gnana nirmatan abhyasat abhyas a practice has to be done then the fire that is created what will it burn pasham dahati pandita the bondage will be burnt away by the knowledge the fire of knowledge now that is the simple meaning of this mantra more of this i will take up in the morning class om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva vashishyate om shanti 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ओम